Here's how not to get digitally pickpocketed. Police in Des Plaines, Illinois recently reported that a Walgreens ATM was fitted with devices meant to steal people's banking information. These skimming devices have been spotted at ATMs and even in gas pumps across the U.S. But how to avoid them? ATM skimmers are card readers fitted over the machine's card slot that copy personal data from the card's magnetic strip. The user's PIN is captured using either a pinhole camera hidden on the ATM or captured by a fake keyboard placed over the real one. The first step to spotting a skimmer is to check for signs of tampering. Be wary of differences between machines that are side by side. For example, if one has a flashing indicator and the other does not. Push and pull at any protruding parts to see if they are securely attached and have only one piece. Skimmers can only read the magnetic strip if the card is inserted in a single straight motion, so experts suggest wiggling the card as it goes in to foil the skimmer. When using credit cards, avoid transactions that necessitate swiping the mag strip. Instead, use EMV chip readers and NFC or tap to pay, which are more secure and harder to hack. If you do realize your card has been skimmed or notice any suspicious activity on your account, alert your bank. You can still get your money back as long as the theft is reported immediately. Stealing is so much more high-tech now. Hackers steal money via the Starbucks mobile app. Hackers are stealing money from people's credit cards, bank, and PayPal accounts via the Starbucks mobile app. Hackers can steal money from the Starbucks app by adding a new e-gift card, transferring funds over, and repeating the process when funds are reloaded. Hackers can also hack into existing gift cards and turn on the auto-reload function to drain the funds. Enabling two-step authentication, which sends a text to your phone whenever you sign in from a new device, would have protected Starbucks customers. Starbucks has yet to decide whether it will add new security measures to its system. Customers can protect themselves by creating strong passwords and by not saving financial information in their Starbucks app account. Hackers can steal fingerprints from photographs. It's a fashionable way to strike a pose that apparently started in Asia and has gained popularity around the world. But now Japanese scientists are warning people their identities could be stolen simply by flashing the peace sign for a selfie. According to researchers from Japan's National Institute of Informatics, it is possible to steal someone's fingerprints in a photo taken from up to three meters away. All the potential hacker requires is a digital camera and that the fingerprints be well lit and in focus. The researchers say the peace sign makes it easy for hackers to match fingerprints to faces, posing a security threat to phones, laptops, bank accounts, and buildings. The researchers warn it is possible to steal fingerprints from peace sign gestures, waving, and giving people the thumbs up. So does that mean we can't take any more cutesy-wootsy photos? Maybe not, because the researchers have developed a titanium oxide-based coating that can be attached to fingers to hide their prints. The film protects fingerprints from theft, but doesn't stop them from working as security verification. However, it won't be available commercially for another two years. So in the meantime, you might want to protect your digits, or at least put on some gloves or something. Either that, or strike a pose that won't lead to your fingerprints being stolen. Teen hacks his way into CIA director's AOL account. The CIA's top official, Director John Brennan, had his personal email account owned this month, according to a report in the New York Post. The anonymous hacker recently contacted the paper to brag about how he socially engineered his way into Brennan's AOL account. The hacker, who claims to be a white teenaged American, says he's been prank calling Brennan since August. When he and his two friends got the spy boss's cell number, a reverse lookup revealed he was a Verizon customer. Posing as tech support, the hacker called Verizon with a phony employee code and was able to get Brennan's account number, PIN code, AOL email address, and other private details. Then posing as Brennan with the info he got from Verizon, he called AOL and got the email password reset. On October 12th, the hacker logged into Brennan's personal AOL account and accessed dozens of emails, many of which contained top secret documents Brennan had forwarded from his work account. When Brennan discovered he'd been owned, he tried to reset the password, but on three occasions, the hackers were able to get back into his account. The hacker then called Brennan's cell to taunt him. He says Brennan tried to buy their silence with cash, to which the kid replied, all he wanted was a free Palestine and for the U.S. to stop killing innocent people. 
Just goes to show, if an American kid can hack into the CIA director's personal emails, maybe we should be a little bit more worried about those Chinese and Russian digital gangsters after all. How today's cars are vulnerable to hacking. As our world becomes ever more reliant on smart devices, today's drivers face a new danger on the road. With modern cars becoming increasingly computerized, hackers are able to exploit security holes to remotely take control of vehicles. It is possible for a skilled hacker to get into a driver's mobile app, a car's entertainment center, onboard diagnostics, airbags, locks, as well as critical systems like the engine and brakes. Hackers can use a car's cellular, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection to gain access. The software can then be read and altered code inserted back into the car's computers. Many modern cars contain more than 100 computer processors, leaving them susceptible to hacking and privacy attacks not possible with older vehicles. Last year, in London alone, software flaws helped hackers steal more than 6,000 cars.